The Iron Dome, Israel's legendary missile shield, was built to stop everything. But what happens when it doesn't? In today's video, we break down the day this high-tech defense system was overwhelmed and what it means for the future of modern warfare. Like, subscribe, and stay locked in. On a calm spring morning, the skies above Israel erupted into chaos. Sirens blared across cities, iron dome launchers fired relentlessly, and yet some missiles still got through. That day wasn't just another escalation in the Middle East. It was a pivotal moment. A moment when the world realized missile defense, no matter how advanced, is not invincible. This is the story of the day the Iron Dome was defeated, a stark turning point that signals the dawn of a new era in missile warfare. From swarm drone tactics to hypersonic threats, the future battlefield will never be the same. The calm before the storm. In the early hours of May 12, 2025, the streets of Israel buzzed with the normal rhythm of life. The skies were clear, the atmosphere peaceful. For most Israelis, it was just another morning, routine, unremarkable, and quiet. But 300 kilometers away, deep in hidden bunkers and remote deserts, something extraordinary was being prepared. At exactly 16 a.m., that peace was broken. Radar stations lit up, Early warning systems sounded alarms, and within seconds, the Iron Dome missile defense system, Israel's digital guardian, was activated. The world had seen this before. Rockets from Gaza or Lebanon would be launched, and the Iron Dome would respond, neutralizing threats with pinpoint precision. For over a decade, this system had protected cities like Tel Aviv, Ashdod, and Ashkelon with near-perfect accuracy. But what was unfolding now wasn't a typical barrage. This time, it was something else entirely. The rise of the Iron Dome. To understand why this moment mattered so deeply, one must understand what the Iron Dome represented. Developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems with US support, the Iron Dome was deployed in 2011 as a response to the growing threat of short-range rockets from Hamas and Hezbollah. It quickly became a technological marvel. The system combined a detection and tracking radar a battle management center, and a series of interceptor missile launchers. When a rocket was fired toward Israeli territory, the radar would detect its trajectory. If the system calculated that the projectile was heading toward a populated area, it would launch an interceptor to destroy it mid-air. Its success rate reached over 90%, an astonishing figure for any defense system. Internationally, the Iron Dome became a case study in modern air defense. Military analysts praised its cost efficiency, accuracy, and design. Nations including the United States, South Korea, India, and several NATO members sought to purchase or develop similar systems. For Israel, it was more than just technology. It was a symbol of security, hope, and national pride. The attack begins. As the Iron Dome locked onto its first targets on May 12th, it quickly became evident that this wasn't an ordinary rocket volley. In less than 10 minutes, over 600 projectiles were launched from multiple directions. By 6.40 a.m., that number had crossed 1,200, and by the end of the first hour, nearly 1,800 separate threats had been identified. These were not all rockets. The attack was a mix of traditional Qassam-style rockets, precision-guided missiles, decoy drones, loitering munitions, and kamikaze UAVs. Unlike past assaults, this strike was synchronized using AI-driven coordination software, allowing launchers to fire in perfect sequence to overwhelm the system. The sky turned into a digital battlefield. Interceptors shot upward in all directions. Some missiles were neutralized, some were not. Then came the first breach. A rocket exploded near a power station in Ashkelon. Minutes later, another struck a neighborhood in Be'er Sheva. The Iron Dome had intercepted hundreds, but dozens slipped through. The myth of total protection shattered in real time. The system overwhelmed. To the average observer, it seemed like a massive failure. But the truth was more complex. The Iron Dome had not malfunctioned. It had been overloaded. Designed to prioritize and intercept the most dangerous threats, the system could only handle a finite number of simultaneous projectiles. When faced with nearly 2,000, it was forced to make calculated choices sometimes letting lower threat rockets However, through to focus the on those headed had toward planned critical for that. infrastructure. By blending in decoys, AI swarming drones, 
and noise-emitting UAVs, they confused Iron Dome's radar systems. This forced the launch of high-cost interceptors against cheap, low-value threats. In some cases, interceptors were wasted on non-lethal drones, allowing real rockets to continue unchallenged. By 7.15 a.m., several major cities had taken hits. Fires burned in industrial parks, power lines were down, military logistics centers were damaged. Civilian casualties, though limited by shelters and early warning systems, began to be reported. The psychology of invincibility collapses. Until that day, the Israeli population had placed enormous faith in the Iron Dome. It had become a psychological comfort blanket, something that would always be there, always catch the rocket. But the system's vulnerability shook the nation. Social media erupted with panic. Videos of missed intercepts, explosions, and fireballs over cities went viral. Hashtags like hashtag Iron Dome Breach, hashtag May 12 Attack, and hashtag New Warfare trended globally. Politicians were questioned. Military leadership came under scrutiny. Parents were furious. Families demanded answers. The breach wasn't just technological, it was emotional. It reminded the population that no system, no matter how advanced, is perfect. It forced a national reckoning with the reality of modern warfare. Global military response. The implications extended far beyond Israel's borders. Within 24 hours, the Pentagon initiated an urgent review of U.S. missile defense programs. Questions arose. Could American systems like Thayad and Aegis withstand a similar attack? Could swarms of cheap drones launched by a state or non-state actor overwhelm even the most powerful nations? Across Europe, NATO allies convened emergency virtual meetings. Intelligence briefings suggested that adversaries like Iran, North Korea, and even non-state groups like Hezbollah were rapidly developing similar multi-platform attack capabilities. South Korea, under threat from North Korean artillery and missile arsenals, began urgent discussions with its allies. Japan increased its satellite tracking coverage and began pushing forward plans for AI interceptor integration. This was no longer a regional issue. The world had just watched a first-of-its-kind hybrid missile swarm assault, and everyone realized that the rules had changed. The cost war, one of the most alarming revelations of the attack, was the economic disparity between the offense and defense. Each Tamir interceptor launched by Iron Dome cost between $50,000 and $100,000. Most of the rockets and drones used by the attackers cost less than $1,000. Some were as cheap as $300, made from modified commercial quadcopters or 3D printed frames with explosives. This meant that in under an hour, Israel may have spent tens of millions of dollars to defend against a few million dollars worth of weaponry. This kind of cost asymmetric warfare is not sustainable, especially in prolonged conflict. It gave adversaries a powerful tool, bleed your enemy not just with bombs, but with economics. The role of cyber sabotage. Though never officially confirmed, many military analysts and Israeli intelligence insiders suggested that a low-level cyber attack may have disrupted Iron Dome's communication nodes for several seconds. That small window may have delayed decision-making between radar systems and launchers, just enough for some rockets to get through. In modern warfare, seconds matter. A cyber interruption, even one as short as 5-10 seconds, could shift the outcome of a defense system's performance. This attack may have been the world's first case of a successful cyber-physical hybrid missile assault where hacking was synchronized with kinetic weapons. Israel's response, new technologies emerge. Following the attack, Israel moved rapidly to respond. Within days, defense officials unveiled an accelerated timeline for the deployment of the Iron Beam, a laser-based interception system that fires beams of concentrated energy to destroy threats in midair. Unlike traditional interceptors, lasers cost only a few dollars per shot and can fire continuously, making them ideal for countering drone swarms and saturation attacks. In addition, Israel confirmed deeper cooperation with Elon Musk's Starshield program, a military-grade variant of Starlink. Starshield offers satellite-based missile tracking, AI-driven threat assessment, and potentially space-deployed countermeasures. While still under development, it represents the direction warfare is headed, a 
upward, era of war orbital, and autonomous. The defeat of the Iron Dome wasn't just a singular military event. It marked the start of a new chapter in warfare. We are now entering an era where war is driven by artificial intelligence, autonomous drones, low-cost swarms, cyber capabilities, and space integration. The old equation of bigger bombs and more tanks no longer defines victory. Now, the most dangerous weapons are small, smart, and self-guiding. Wars can be started by laptops, waged by machines, and decided by algorithms. In this world, traditional air defenses must be replaced, or at least reinforced, with systems that can think, adapt, and respond at lightning speed. The Iron Dome still exists. It still protects. But its invincibility is gone. The battle that changed everything. May 12, 2025 will be remembered as the day the Iron Dome was pierced, not just by missiles, but by the future. The skies over Israel showed the world that no defense is perfect and no technology is eternal. What matters now is how nations adapt. As the sun rose on May 13th, Israel began rebuilding, but the world began reimagining. Because the next battle won't be won by the strongest military, it will be won by the fastest code, the smartest machine, and the most adaptive defense. This wasn't the end. It was the beginning of a new warfighting age. The battlefield is evolving, and even the best defenses may not be enough. The day the Iron Dome was breached could mark the beginning of a new missile era. What's your take on the future of warfare? Drop a comment below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to keep the conversation going. Keep the conversation going.